Today we're making beautiful winter DIYs using Dollar Tree items. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Today I'm in a collaboration with my beautiful friend Fabi from Arrows DIY. She has a channel that is just full of beautiful DIYs. She is very big with communicating in the community and she's just a pleasure to be friends with here on YouTube. Look at all this craftiness. So when she asked me to do this with her, I very gladly said yes. DIY number one is a mini snow bear arrangement. So I chose this little polar bear from Dollar Tree. And there are several different types that you can choose from. They're itty bitty, just tiny little things. Some snowflakes from Dollar Tree. These I've had in my stash for a while. Some of these snowy willow picks, also from Dollar Tree. Some cedar picks. And then these are two little pieces of scraps that I had. So we're going to start off with this beautiful little white planter. And I did not check mine when I got it out of the box. And you can see there's a chip right there. So be sure that you check yours. I was just in a rush. You're going to use some floral foam to put down on the inside. Just cut a piece that's relatively the right size. And then you can just use a metal ruler or a knife to carefully remove and make it flat right on the top. Just like that. Very easy. This foam is kind of messy, so you're going to have to be sure you wipe this all back off. Clean off your surface before you go forward or it will stick on everything. So I'm just going to start with this snowy pick and put it down in here. I'm trying to get an idea of how big I want this to be, and I think that that overwhelms the size of that little planter. So you can pull it apart, bunch it together. Um, you can use some floral wire if you want to connect it, but I think that doing it this way is going to give me the right height that I'm looking for. I'm just going to cut apart a few of those little branches there. Very easy to alter these pieces. You just use your wire cutters or your scissors. And then cut those pieces off. You want to be sure that you're going to have some variety of height. It's just more interesting instead of everything being exactly the same. Matchy matchy. Um, it's not like that in nature, you know, so we don't want this to look landscaped, in other words. We want this to look uh, woodsy, rustic, and, you know, kind of woodland. That's how I like to do it. But you can always do it the way you like. Now, you want to be sure that you cover up that foam on the inside, so it just looks better that way. And if you use full enough pieces, you can certainly cover that up. I just cut a piece down and then put it right there, and it also helps kind of disguise that chip. Same goes with these gorgeous glittery picks. Um, you will see in my crafting, I don't do much glitter, but I think that it is appropriate in the winter time and at Christmas time um, to use a little sparkle, just like snow sparkles, right? Okay, so then we're gonna make a pick with these. I don't want this to look flimsy, so I'm gonna just layer these two together and cut your little strings off because these are actually um, sold as Christmas ornaments. You can use the little clear ones that you can see up there in the right hand corner if you want. Whatever you want to use, but I, I like the silver for this. So I'm just going to use some um, hot glue and a pick that I got the, um, the cedar pick. I just cut that off the bottom and we're going to use that as a pick because it's glittery so it's going to match perfectly. Add some hot glue on here. Carefully protect your fingers. If there's even a slight chance you might get glue on yourself, these glue guns get super hot. Okay, so we're going to add some more here and just kind of sandwich this in here. Almost like making a cookie pop. You glue that down, and if you feel like you need a little more glue between the other pieces that are sticking out, you can go ahead and do that too, but you have to be very careful because um, your exposure to getting glue all over you is definitely there when you start getting micromanagey on your snowflake. Just pressing it together to make sure the glue is sticking to all three of those surfaces and I'm gonna see where I want it to go in my arrangement. I know that I want it to be sort of in the middle and I'm, I'm trying to show this to you at a slight angle and so it's crooked to begin with but then I do kind of lean it a little bit like that. And now I think that looks a little bit better. You can do whatever you like. I like the look of this. 
I think it's a cute little arrangement. It'd be nice on a desk. It'd be a nice little gift to give somebody, a coworker. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. DIY number two is a snowy winter wreath. This is an easy one, y'all. You can definitely do this. So Dollar Tree sells these little canvas wall art pieces. They're beautiful, but they're so small, it's kind of hard to use it alone. So I thought a wreath is a perfect place for it. I'm gonna use some of these cloths. They're for card detailing. I'm gonna use some greenery picks that I already had and then a 14 inch wreath from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take these cloths, pull them apart. They have little, um, you know, little plastic things in them. So you just pop those out, lay it flat, and then go ahead and start cutting some strips. I cut mine in each one of them in four pieces. And I'm just gonna begin to wrap this around this wreath. This is super easy. I'm not wearing my finger protectors, and I know I sound like a broken record, but please be careful. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna start wrapping this around here. I'm just gonna make sure that it is overlapped slightly onto itself so that there's no space and that it's a little more quilted. It's a little bit thicker if you do it that way instead of stretching it out as far as you can go. So just put a little hot glue there, pat that down, and then wherever you need to trim, go ahead and trim it off or fold it under because you don't want, this is the back of the wreath here, you don't want all those end pieces to show in the front. You want it to look finished and smooth. You don't want ends and seams on the front of your creations. So you can see so far how that's gonna look. Go ahead and go to the back and overlap for your next piece. And you just twist it around just like we did before. And you're gonna continue to go around just like that all the way around your wreath. Wrapping it, gluing it, putting finished edges under, inside, and to the back. So now we're back on the back side and we're finishing up. I'm just pulling that, pressing it down, and then I'll take that little flap, cut it off, and then make sure that it is nicely finished on the back. So now we're gonna start on putting this little canvas sign on our wreath. We're gonna cut this off, just a little bit of floral wire, and it looks like I'm running low there. Note to self, buy more floral wire. Cut that off. And then we're gonna glue these on either of these little short sides. Just add some hot glue. If you prefer to use some type of a tape, you can do that, but I get kind of rough when I am tightening things down and I'm not sure that anything else would work, except maybe a staple. That would probably be actually the best thing. Okay, so while that is cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my pick. Now there's a variety of different types of things on here. So I'm just going to cut off the three different kinds that I like. There'll be three different types of greenery. In other words, on the swag part, which is gonna be the top of our wreath. So you can use three picks of whatever type that you like from Dollar Tree if you don't have thrifted pieces or leftovers. So we're just gonna turn them stems toward each other. Same thing with the other one. And it's pretty much the same thing on either side. Then take a zip tie and tighten it, but not all the way down. Leave a little space in there so that you can add more and you can take things out if you're not sure of them. I'm gonna add this little piece of, I think this is cedar on the top. And then I'm just going to tighten it down. You can pull that to the back so that you don't see that little knob sticking up and just trim it off. It will be covered up, so don't worry about that. All right, so now you can just use a, another one of those zip ties and cinch that on whatever part of the wreath that you want to be your top. It's a circle, so there's really no top or bottom. You get to decide where your pretty spots are. Maybe if you made a mistake or there's a little gap, maybe that's where you wanna put your swag, so it's gonna cover up your mistake. All right, and I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit and fluff it up a little bit. And I like the variety of glitter and there's some larger, chunkier pieces of glitter in there and also some snowy branches. I think that looks good. I couldn't find the perfect green to match what's in this sign. It's more of a bluish green, but I think we get the point. You can use whatever you have. Now I'm just gonna push those wires through that fabric and wrap it around 
and close it. Try to make sure that you have it around one of the wires on the inside of the wreath so that everything stays snugly in place. Now go ahead and trim these off so it's nice and neat. And now we're gonna start with a bow. So I've got some of this ribbon that I already had and then this is some that was thrifted. I'm gonna take my little bow making tool that I made and I do have a link for that uh, if you're interested in trying to make your own. It's very easy. I'm gonna fold this wired ribbon in half and then press it right down in here. I'm gonna leave my tails about eight inches long. Then I'll just be flipping that ribbon over. Since both sides of this ribbon are exactly the same, there's no need to twist it in the middle. But I'll show you what to do when we get to the one that's got a good side and a not so good side. And we're making these loops about probably five inches long I think is what I have I don't have my glasses on right now but I think they're about four or five inches and then the tails are eight inches so I'm just gonna do one tail to the top one tail to the bottom and then cut that off at this point if you want to dovetail you can go ahead and dovetail but I am going to continue with this bow so I'm going to take the snowy bow here it's iridescent it's just absolutely gorgeous it is also wired in the same uh, thickness is the other one though it doesn't matter now you're gonna twist in the middle so now my white side is going to be on the inside and my iridescent side will be up top press it down and make my loop I want this one to be a little bit smaller than the white one I'm gonna press it down give it a twist so that the white or the undecorated side is in the middle and then the iridescent side is up again And that's how you do it same thing with the tails here eight inches on each side now you can go to Amazon and you can buy a bow the the bow maker tool I'm not exactly sure the exact name of what it is I'm not suggesting that you have to buy anything if you are not able to buy anything then you might want to try doing something like this and you can certainly make your bows by hand and you don't have to use a bow maker I just want to give you options so we're going to put a zip tie underneath and slide that up holding on to the center i'm going to slip my zip tie over into the middle since it was off to the side just a little slipping it into the middle and that keeps all of the loops of our bows the same size so i'm going to cut off that extra bit and begin to pull and fluff out the little loops in the bow i was not sure that the shininess and the brilliance in that bow would actually come through on my camera but it is and I'm pleased with that it's very pretty it's a very pretty ribbon I love finding stuff like this at the thrift store because when you pay by weight you end up getting you know nine twelve dollars worth of ribbon for two or three dollars it's really nice so now if you haven't already dovetailed your ends you might want to go ahead and do that or you can cut them in a slant whatever type of finished look you like best and then I'm going to use a white pipe cleaner it's fuzzy just like our wreath so it should just disappear right into the wreath I've got that bow on there and we're at the back of the wreath now and we're going to secure it and also make a hanger so you're gonna take your two tails that you have left, wrap them around and then back down and you have a nice little loop to hang your wreath. At this time, you want to see how exactly you want your tails and your loops to be on your bow. You could certainly pull all the tails down underneath if you would like, or you can leave them kind of up top and just kind of, you know, asymmetric. And I like to do that a lot of times. As I'm fooling around with the bow and fluffing it, I kind of just follow with the what the bow wants to do if you know if you understand what I'm saying I kind of do I go with the flow in other words I go with the flow I don't fight it and this seems to want to go like this so I'm gonna let it we're gonna just let it be just like this and at this point if you want to stop you certainly can if not you can go ahead and add a little bit of greenery on the bottom and I felt like it needed a little more so that's what I'm doing here just using two little leftover sprigs that look a little bit different I'm just looking to see how I like them and then I'm just gonna glue them down you can do berries you can do whatever you want leave it white um, 
you know, whatever you feel like you want to do here. I don't want anything falling off. Okay, so now I'm just picking it up, looking at it from all angles, because you know that's what we do on this channel. We pick it up, we look at it from all sides. Isn't that a beautiful little canvas? It's so pretty. Okay. So now I feel like there's a hole above the bow and I feel like I want to fill that in. So that's easy enough to do. You're just gonna add some glue, add another glue stick so that you can add glue. I was running low. And then just go ahead and cut down a piece that you like and just put it right in the top. Go ahead and subscribe if you enjoy these types of videos. I would love to have you here. If you are coming over from Favi's channel, Welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. I hope you stick around and join our fun. And if you are one of my subscribers or viewers, please go over and see the link and see Fivey. DIY number three, the ice skate garland. Okay, so this is plaster chalk paint, white chalk paint. Use whatever kind of paint you like. I have got some folk art brushed metal and it's like a brush silver, I believe, and then some Martha Stewart glittery. Glittery paint, I would say, but it's more like a glitter glue. You could probably use that too. Some Let It Snow from Dollar Tree, some Skates from Dollar Tree, and then also these little hanging chalkboard signs came from Dollar Tree. And they come in two different sizes, so you just choose what you like. I have a little cotton cording also. You're gonna start by taking off all of your jute. Remove all those hangers, easy enough. Now you see here some of these are not finished very well and they're splintery. We don't want that. You want this to be high end and you're going to get your sanding paper or your sanding block and just go over all those wooden pieces on the tops there. Smooth them down so you don't hurt yourself. Now see if you don't have a special tool you can pull these pieces off the skate. I just showed you what will happen if you just pull it off. You may have some splintering but you're not going to see it so it's not a problem. However, if you have a tool like I do, go ahead and use something thin like this. Slide it under and just slide it around under there before you pry it up and that'll kind of break the glue seal. Same thing here with this tie. The snowflake is so thin it would absolutely break if you try to do it with your fingers. But you can do it just like that if you slide something thin under there. So sand off anything that needs to be sanded on the skates. There's a little rough spots where the glue was that held those snowflakes down. Wipe it off and then go ahead and begin painting. Now, I chose these colors because I like a rustic look. I feel like I really want these to fit into my particular home, but you can do these any way you like. I like the idea of having a creamy white and then a bright white together. So that's why I did mine this way. Just get whatever brush you like to use and just get in there. Leave that row out where the, um, the grommet spots are or where the eyes are that you put your laces in. Just leave that part out. And <laughs> I was dancing and listening to Christmas music. And uh, go ahead and finish the rest and let it dry. And then I'm just taking that white and putting it over the snowflake here. I'm just almost like a dry brush, I guess. I'm trying to like wipe some off and then rub it on there because I don't want it to be so stark. You know, I want it to kind of blend in a little better. I'm taking that brush metal and going over the blade part of the skates. This is gonna be underneath the boot itself or the shoe, this, the top part, and then just make all of that that silver color. Now you can use gray, you can use whatever you want. You could also use acrylic paint markers, you could use regular markers. Use what you have. I'm going to use that same paint and do the other skate and then I'm going to go over the wording of let it snow. It's thin, It's even with shaking it up it's kind of thin so you can almost see underneath it. I'm going to take my cherry colored furniture repair marker from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use it as a stain for these pieces. These are all going to blend in nicely together and I think this makes it have a richer look, a more finished look I guess. You're going to go over the top and all the pieces that you can see. We're not worried about the back. That's not going to be seen. So here we go. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to use this same color to go around the bottom of the shoe which is usually like a, 
I don't know, a leather. So I'm going to go ahead and do it like that. Going back over with that bright white that I have and go right over where the shoe would lace up or the boot would lace up. I'm trying not to get into that line that's beside there that's kind of lasered or cut into there because I want this to to show. I want to leave it there so that it gives it more dimension. Just like that. You can use a toothpick while your paint's wet and clean that out. Now we're going to cover the top of the boot or the skate with a little bit of the fur that we used on our wreath. Very easy to do. So you're just going to lay it there and trim it down. Nothing precise here. Got to have that coffee while you're working, right? Put some hot glue on there. And you could probably use a spray adhesive also for this. I just have my hot glue handy and I like to use it because it's there. And same thing on the other one. And this is going to give a little furry top. And I like the way it looks. I think it looks cozy. Okay, so once that is flat, we're going to, and I'm making sure that it's nice and dry here and cool. Just kind of looking at it to make sure that when I fold it over, I don't have a lot of bulk in the middle and that it just kind of meets itself. And it does. So pretty good for eyeballing, right? Some more hot glue is going to be put right along the top and the bottom and you can fill on the inside if you would like. Kind of roll it down, press it down and it'll give you a nice little smooth edge there. Same thing with this. And be sure if you've used uh, any type of a stain that you wash your hands before handling light colored stuff because the stain will transfer right over onto your light fabrics. So just, just know you need to do that. I do have white paint on my fingers, but it's dried and this is white, so we're good. All right, now I'm just kind of feeling for the edge and I'm gonna go right outside the edge and just trim it down a little bit because it's a little too much and I don't want it to look ridiculously sized against the skate when we put it back on. So I'm just, it was naturally curved, so I'm just curving it. And then you can just kind of brush over that fluff with your fingers and it'll fluff it right up and look how cute. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of that glittery paint and I'm going to just kind of, if you brush it, it's gonna be very barely noticeable. So I did actually change the technique when I started doing these snowflakes and just kind of dabbed it up and down and brushed it back and forth. It seemed to lay more paint on that way. You can see here I'm dabbing it and more of the glitter actually shows. It's very slight. Okay, so once these are dry, I'm gonna go back in with a silver acrylic pen and I'm gonna go back over those circles where you would lace up the skate. Skate, boot, shoe, I have set all kinds of footwear. It's actually a skate. Let it dry so you don't smear anything on both of them and look how pretty that looks. It's pretty. Now we get to put our little fuzzy top back on. It does curve downward, so be sure that you put it back on correctly. Just like that, and that, oh my goodness, I love this. I love this. Little bit of hot glue, and you can put that fuzzy little piece right back on there. What do you think? Do you like these? Which one do you think you like the best so far? I mean, I know you haven't seen the entire thing here but do you have a favorite yet? Okay, so now we're gonna add the snowflakes back down on both of them. Y'all, we are almost to 10,000. I set a goal for myself to have 10,000 subscribers by 2022 and we are almost there. Just a few hundred left. I'm so excited. Are y'all excited? I'm so excited. All right, I'm gonna take some of that white cord and I'm just gonna go where it's mainly behind the little flag piece here. You gotta go in on one side, pull it back, and then push it back up into the other side. You do that on each one of these, and that is gonna form our little banner or bunting or whatever you wanna call this. Or garland, yeah. So you can see how it will look. And then we're gonna start putting our pieces down and then we'll add a little something extra. So once you get it where you want it, a little tip for you is hold it in place and just pivot it up. 
I'm gonna put this where it's on the top here so there's some shading behind it. You can see some shadow behind it and it gives it, uh, I think, a little more depth. I'm gonna go right underneath the blade here, add just a little. And the best thing about these little things, that hot glue wipes right off. Look at that. It comes right off. It's not a chalkboard texture. It's, it's a little bit different. Uh, if you've got these, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to explain it. It just looks like a chalkboard. And then same thing here to make sure that my things stay in the same place. Now, I went and got this little, this came off of a sign that I did last year. It's a snowflake that's metal and it's actually an ornament. I want to put it in the middle and I want it to be raised up so I used a scrap of wood. And now I'm going to take uh, a little hot glue and put it down. I made a little wreath with the Pitberry garland that is white. And that was actually in the Christmas or the fall, I think. And I'm going to just add some hot glue. I laid it down first so that I don't make a huge mess. I can just put the glue exactly where I need it to make it stay down. And then I'm going to use some of my clamps from Dollar Tree and just let it sit there until I feel like it's had enough time to dry. And you can see when I'm pulling on it, it's definitely there. Now I'm going to add my little Let It Snow. You could color this white if you want it to stand out more. I loved it just the way it is, so I'm going to leave it that way. But do whatever you think you need to. You know, paint's easy. You just add more. Just paint over it. Now I want to add some mini wreaths to go right in between as spacers. So I'm going to do the same thing on a smaller scale and just wrap that pit berry around itself. So easy, just like that. I'm going to use the same white cord and just take a few scraps of it and just tie a double knot to hold it down. And then you can just trim that off whenever you get done. And I cut mine way down. You can make a bow here if you wanted to, um, you know, whatever you want to do, but I didn't want to, um, to do that. So I just cut it off right above the knot, do that on both sides. And then this is how we're gonna hang it. Do you see here, I'm making a loop and I'm going to take that loop and tie it. Pull it through. So now we have a little loop to hang it with. You can trim off your extras if you would like. You can do that on both sides. Just like that. Measure where you want to hang it first so you know for sure what you need. So these are my beautiful winter DIYs. And I really do think that they are beautiful. There's something that is so magical and beautiful and clean and crisp about winter. And I think that the colors that we use are just reminiscent of good times and coziness. And I just love it. I love it. So now that you've seen the final ones, which one do you like the best? Thank you so much, Fabi, for having me. Miss Arrows DIY, I'm so glad to have participated in this with you. I wish you much channel growth and happiness in the year to come. Thank you to all of my subscribers. I am so, so happy to have you. You mean so much to me. Your support, your comments, you're just the sweetest bunch of folks. I really do appreciate you. Thank you so very much for stopping by. And I'll see you again soon. Now y'all go watch Fabi's video. Bye.